Um, hello there, welcome back. Now we're going to put some distance between these elements and then add a camera to the scene so we can see um, see how the 3D camera works. Uh, so first up, I'm going to introduce you to the top view because that will um, that will show you how these elements are arranged in a 3D space. Now, every scene in Toon Boom has a virtual kind of 3D space um, through which you can move elements like characters and cameras and things like that. So um, you'll find the top view in any of these panels. Um, you can click the little uh, panel arrow and choose top. That's a, a camera view and side is a camera view as well. So I'm just going to choose top here and there's your top view. Um, I'll minimize the color so you can see a bit better. Just move this, this across this bit. Now, what I've got here, um, this is this is what I was talking about, the, the top down view of your scene. Basically, um, if you can imagine all the elements of your scene um, positioned in 3D space, um, positioned, they're, they're painted on uh, pieces of glass and in 3D space um, you can look down on those sheets of glass and just see them as a straight line and that's what we've got here in the top view we've just got we're looking at the tops of the sheets of glass and nowhere is this better illustrated than the perspective view of um, the perspective view of the scene the perspective is another camera view um, but you can't render the perspective view this is this shows the elements all stacked on top of one another but you can rotate the space around so you can see um, how they look as a stack so what the top view is is what we're looking at here in the top view is basically is this that's what we can see we're looking down at all these um, these scene elements and so they're just flat it's just a, th a thin line so what we want to do, I'm going to put that like, uh, where's a good place, I'll, I'll just put that there. Ca the perspective view is just so awesome, it just allows you to, to look at your scene um, in a whole new way and it's just fantastic. Um, you can zoom in and out on it just like you can in any other view, like same as the, the top view and the, and the side view. Uh, zooming in and out once again is a one and two keys, um, but I have a, a shortcut set up with my, with my tablet. Um, which makes it very fast. So I'll just put that there, go back to camera view, and now I want to start arranging all these elements in the 3D space. So I'm going to sel select the top one. You can see that they're a little bit misaligned already because I've been playing with it earlier. But I'll, uh, I'll pull, pull those uh, foreground bushes forward. What I've done is selected it in the timeline, and then with the move tool up here, I can pull it forward or back into the scene. And you can see this little list of um, of scene elements on the left of the top view shows the the order in which the the elements are. So if I push this this um, this foreground bush, which you can see at the bottom of the list, if I push it back, you can see that it moves to the to the top of the stack, which you know is the other way around of um, of how you'd imagine it. At the top of the stack equals the back of the scene in this in the top view in this particular case. But anyway, uh, beside the point. Um, which is we're just going to move these elements now in 3D space and put them in a, in a kind of order that that uh, makes it possible to have um, depth in our camera moves. So um, I will I'm going to move the sky back first, and I'll just introduce you to a cool little um, thing. Uh, if I want to move something, I can just um, with the move tool I can just grab anywhere in the top view and move it freely but if I want to constrain that movement to forward and back then I can just click that little forward back arrow and drag that now the cool thing I want to introduce you to is as I move it back I move the sky way back into the scene and you can see that it, it eventually shrinks so that the cutoffs appear and what I could do is to scale it up as I shrink it back as I push it back into the into the distance but rather than scaling it so that it stays in the scene and I don't see the cutoffs rather than doing that I there's a tool called maintain size so um, 
and that basically allows you to push something forward and back in the scene uh, and it automatically scales it for you so you don't have to so that's here in the in the tools the advanced animation tools maintain size it's that one and now with that element selected the sky selected I push it back as far as I want and what it does is if I zoom out so you can see the whole element I can push it as far back or as far forward as I like in the top view and it maintains the size it stays the exact same size which is great it's very very handy so I'm gonna push the sky way back now I'll select the hills I'm gonna leave maintain size on because I want them to um, I want them to scale automatically as well I'll push them way back right back against the the sky you can see at the top there the, the sky and the hills are together S the 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 second lot of hills I'll have them a bit closer so I'm arranging them as as um, how I would see the distance between them in in a realistic setting uh, that foreground tree that middle ground tree I'll push it to the middle of the scene um, now selecting the foreground tree I'll push it kinda to the foreground and now with the foreground bush the main element still got maintained size on so I can pull it way forward um, if you ever lose track of an element in your scene which has happened to me a, a couple of times it could actually be behind the camera and you can do that by moving the element too far in the f in the top view or the side view you move it far enough and it it appears to it, it seems to disappear from the scene and there's and you, you don't know where it is but in the top view it's um it's behind the camera so make sure that you don't go too far and there so with all those elements arranged in 3d space I can now move the camera which um, the the camera view I haven't got a camera in the scene yet so let me just quickly add one uh, the button there camera um, and I'm going to add a peg to it so it has a movement layer and now I can move that camera up and down and you can see just how much depth there is in the scene I can move it side to side and you can see this moving in the top view as well you can move it around in the top view if you like if that's where you want to do it and you can keyframe this so um, up and down way up in the sky going down the trees this really puts a lot of depth into your scene something that you d don't get just by rotating the camera up and rotating down which is a flat pan so um, <clears throat> before we wrap this one up um, I'll just animate that that thing if we just quickly flick back to the perspective view uh, I'll zoom way out and you can see now that these elements have some distance between them and uh, once again this perspective view is just the best thing ever um, that that grid that you can see there in the middle of the scene that's just a kind of a, a kind of basis kind of base thing for you to to help you position your elements at the scene center but uh, yeah this is really cool just like setting up a little paper cutout of your scene it's just great to be able to visualize it that way.